Hi, I'm Kristen from Eeks Office Solutions. Today I'm going to take you through some of the basic settings of your Ricoh scanner. So I'm going to dive right into this. We do have some previous videos posted here, so if you have other questions about copy or basic screen customization, please refer to the earlier videos. For right now, we're going to talk about the scanner button on your Ricoh. When I hit the scanner button, I have a couple of choices, and the first and most important has to do with the destination to which you're going to send your scan. So at the top, you'll see I've got it selected on scan to email, but I might also have scan to folder destinations that I wanted to choose from as well. This is handy because the settings that you'll make over here on the side are all the same, regardless of which mode you're choosing. So I'll use scan to email, but remember the settings for scan to folder are exactly the same. Once I've selected my uh, destination of choice, I can choose a final destination for my document. And if I had multiple destinations here, I could choose those as well. So I could send out to multiple people. My very strong recommendation to you is to scan to your own email and forward from there to make sure that you can follow the thread of that email as it goes forward. Once I've selected my destination, I can see that entire destination up here in the address bar. And over here on the side, I can see the basic settings that are gonna apply to this scan job. If I'd like to alter those, I have the send settings button that I can tap. And now I have my full complement of menu choices. The first one we'll look at is our color setting. We talked in previous videos uh, about the importance of choosing color correctly when we're copying because color copies cost more than black and white ones. In the scanning world, you can think of this as a feature that comes with your machine. So it doesn't cost you any extra whether you scan in black and white or in color. The cost to you really comes in file size. So if I scan in black and white or grayscale, which is just black and white with shades of gray so that you get pretty photographs, um, I can choose to do that or I can choose to scan in color the color documents will always be larger in terms of the resulting digital file size. So watch out for that a little bit. If you're scanning a 50 page document to email, you might want to set that, that setting to black and white if you possibly can, simply because it'll make the smallest possible file for you. You can get a larger number of pages to scan through email without possibly going over your email server's size limitations. So just something to watch out for there. As always, the full color will make the largest file size, so that's something you only want to use with specialty documents like photographs or artwork. But your auto color will take your document and look at each page and decide whether it's color or black and white, and will compress it appropriately, saving you a little file size. Next to our auto color selection button, we have our file type button. This is defaulted to PDF. Typically, when we scan a PDF, what we'll be choosing is multi-page, which is the default. That just means if I scan two pages through the document feeder, I'll get one PDF with two pages in it. I also have the choice here to choose PDF single page. That means that if I put two documents in the document feeder and scan them at the same time, I'll get two PDFs in my email or in my folder, one for each page. This only works if they're separate pages. So you're basically getting everything together or every page is a single page, but it can be very handy for certain kinds of documents. For example, if we had a job fair and had uh, attendees fill out a short survey, we wanted to bring back those single page documents and digitize them quickly. This gives us a way to separate those without having to load and scan each one separately. At the top of your file type, notice that you also have TIFF and JPEG as possibilities if you need to scan to an image file type. If I click the Others tab at the bottom of the drop-down menu, I'll have a little bit more detail that shows up about each of these file types. This can be handy if you're not sure which one to use. Right over here next to our file type is our resolution. Resolution is set really fairly low, um, but for new scanners, this is more than sufficient for most documents. So 200 by 200 will do very well for text documents and even some pictures. If you're scanning something a little bit more sophisticated or maybe I'm gonna scan my Spider-Man picture here and I'd like him to be really pretty, I can go ahead and click this drop down menu. Again, choose my others, and you'll notice that I can go all the way up to 600 DPI. This is a very large file type that's going to result from scanning with this um, resolution selected. So do be a little bit careful of this just because of file size. Otherwise, you can use that as you need it for your more special or uh, photo centric documents. All right, we're going to come down here to our original settings. This is where we can tell the copier that we'd like to scan a document that is two-sided. So notice that I have two-sided open right left and two-sided open top. The only difference there is if I'm scanning a document that is two-sided open right left, both sides are oriented the same way. 
If I choose instead two-sided open to top, my second side is upside down, so it reads by flipping up. Either section, selection that you choose will get you both sides in your scan, but if you choose correctly, then the copier will rotate that second side for you if you have a tablet-bound document that the second side is upside down on, so that when you open that on your computer, both pages are oriented in the same direction for you automatically. Makes it a little bit more convenient. Let's talk about the file name just briefly here. So if I'd like to name this file before I send it, I can do that here simply by tapping on the field and typing in what I'd like it to be called. This is a nice thing to do if you can give your document a quick name before you go back to your desk. Everyone's pretty familiar with the default names that your copier will typically give documents that you scan to your folder or your email. They can be a little opaque. So this is a quick way to be able to name that file before you send it back to your folder or your email. Let's scroll down just a little bit here. Notice that we also have subject and text in this screen, same way. So if I wanted to compose my entire email from the copier, I could. Again, I'd strongly recommend that you simply send that email to yourself and then forward from there, which will save you a lot of hassle and your coworkers from wanting to knock you away from the copier after you've been there too long. Delete blank page is just a toggle. So I just scrolled a little bit farther down on this screen. My delete blank page will do exactly what it says it will. So if I scan in a two-sided document and the second side is blank, I'll only get one page in my scan. So one other setting I'd like to talk about in here is the batch setting. This is just a toggle off and on, and it allows you to build a scan. For example, if I needed to scan a document that had more than the pages would fit in the document feeder all at once. I have 300 pages. I can't fit them all here at once, but I need one PDF from that document. I can put whatever will fit in the document feeder at one time in the document feeder, turn my batch setting on, and go ahead and hit start. Those pages will be scanned in, and it will then tell me to go ahead and set the next original. I can set that original either in the document feeder, if I have more documents that can go there, or I can put a document on the glass and hit start again. When that one's done, I get the same message again that tells me to set the next original. So I can continue to do this process until I've built the entire scan that I want to aggregate. When I'm finished, you'll see at the top here, it goes ahead and tells you to press finish scan when you're finished. Finish scan will send that whole document as one PDF, even though you had to scan it as separate pieces. This is also very handy for documents that might include things like several loose pages, but then also a photograph or a driver's license or a legal document that you don't want or can't put through the document feeder. So the batch setting is very, very handy. We'll reset all those. That is an overview of the scan to email and scan to folder function on your Rico copier. Again, please remember that EECS is happy to provide training for you at any time if you have a copier contract with us. We can come out and be live at your office. We can also use the same technology to do training via webinar for large groups all at one time, therefore enabling social distancing and keeping everybody safe. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day.